Replay, pricing, profits, and payment plans with Richard Formo, episode 251. Are you ready to make your law firm a profit-generating machine that will free up your time and skyrocket your impact? With more than two decades of business growth experience and having proven that you can be successful while prioritizing your family and your impact, Introducing the Profit with Law podcast. I am your host, the creator of the firm differentiator 10x effect, Moshe Amsel. Well, hello and welcome to another guest episode here on the Profit with Law podcast. I'm your host, Moshe Amsel, and I'm excited about our guest today, Richard Formo, because he's with Quick Fee Law Funder, who, if you've been listening to this podcast, uh, for the last couple of months, you know, uh, are, is one of our sponsors and uh, really excited about the conversation today because we dive into this whole concept of payment plans, uh, pro- payment processing, and really understanding how to navigate fee structuring as well as um, making sure that you're getting paid for the work that you're doing. Uh, one of the biggest challenges that law firm owners have is to make sure that the work that you're doing gets paid for. Uh, Clio in their legal trends report in 2019 highlighted how much of the billable hour is actually not billable and how little uh, solo and small law firms bill uh, or collect for their time. And it's like they bill for 2.2 hours a day um, and they only collect 1.8 hours a day. So you're losing four tenths of an hour in, in billing just from not being able to collect it. Uh, this is a great conversation that we have, real eye opener, and I'm excited to share it with you. Before we do that, we're going to jump in and just share some of our sponsors, and then we'll get right into our conversation. Finding amazing employees is the toughest job for any business, and especially for a law firm. You deserve to be the law firm owner you've always wanted to be, but you can't get there without a great team. Get Staffed Up helps you build your all-star team by staffing your law firm with incredible full-time offshore virtual assistants. Work with Get Staffed Up to save money and your biggest resource, time, while they find you the best English-speaking VAs in the world. Hashtag delegate your way to freedom. To learn more, Go to ProfitWithLaw.com forward slash get staffed up. ProfitWithLaw.com forward slash get staffed up. Thanks to our sponsor, Smith AI. Smith AI is a superior virtual receptionist service for small businesses. They specialize in working with solo and small law firms. I discovered Smith AI a couple of years ago and was blown away by the range of services which are available at a cost any attorney even those of you in the smallest solo practice can afford. Their friendly receptionists respond to potential clients in English or Spanish, screen and schedule new leads, and even take payment for consults. The best part is they don't just handle these conversations by phone. They also have live agents and chatbots capturing leads on websites and via text message. If there's one growth hack to your practice, this is it. Smith's friendly gatekeepers can staff your front lines. They'll capture new leads, while you work uninterrupted. You can finally have the peace of mind that while you're working, you're not missing out on future work. Plans start at just $210 a month for calls and $140 a month for chats. They even offer a totally free chatbot, so there's no excuse. Try Smith AI today and see for yourself why attorneys like Justy Nickel in Colorado say, Smith AI receptionists are the secret to business growth and client happiness. Smith AI offers a free trial and podcast listeners can get an extra $100 discount with promo code ProfitLaw100. That's ProfitLaw100. Sign up and learn more at www.smith.ai. Trust me when I say, don't let another day go by. Try Smith AI. And let me give you a little bit of backstory. So Richard and I connected over LinkedIn, I believe. And uh, we had a conversation just to kind of introduce ourselves to each other. And in that conversation, Richard shared with me what he is doing. And immediately after that conversation, uh, my very next podcast recording, I already had an opportunity to point out the amazing uh, 
the amazing technology that they have come up with at his company, um, you know, there's something that's really useful for uh, my listeners. And I wanted to bring him on as a guest so that we can have a conversation around it and really highlight what the purpose of this is and how does it work. Um, so this is, uh, it's not one long promo to his product, but his product solves a very specific need within the industry. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think this is going to be a very, very good conversation for us to have. So, uh, Richard, let me just give you the, the, the official uh, title here. Richard is the Chief Revenue Officer of Quick Fee and Law Funder. And it's my absolute pleasure to have him here on the show. Richard, welcome. Moshe, thank you so much for having me. Uh, certainly excited to, uh, to be on with you and your guests today. Uh, and, and what I'll do here real quick is just give you a, a little bit of background uh, of who I am. But uh, first, you mentioned it already. Uh, Moshe mentioned uh, Law Funder on a, an episode, a few episodes back. Um, and just off of that episode, we had a handful of firms call us right away wanting to utilize our service. So first of all, thank you, uh, Moshe. You're welcome. Um, so as, as Moshe stated, uh, I'm the CRO or Chief Revenue Officer of QuickFee. Uh, we recently IPO'd or went public on the Australian Stock Exchange last June. Um, so successfully to date, um, we've, we've so far had a great ride here in the United States. Um, with a tre tremendous amount of firms, you know, adopting our core product as well as our new QuickV installments product, uh, and uh, currently, right now, uh, we're, we're focusing on QuickV.com as well as Law Funder, or as some might refer to it as LawFundAR.com. So happy to be here. Awesome, Richard. Uh, before before we move for, we move forward, I, I'd like to know. How'd you get started with quick fee or, or, or working in the legal industry? Did, did you, did you work somewhere else before, you know, were you already serving law firms or is this all a new realm for you? Yeah, good question. So I, you know, in the past, I've been in the financial technology or the FinTech um, space for, for quite some time now, a bit over 10 years. And, you know, I got my passion um, to the financial technology industry while I was deployed to Iraq um, in 2010 with the Air Force. And I really just, you know, on the downtime started studying and, and watching some of these companies uh, grow and exit to some of these larger banks, et cetera. So after that, I got my start with a company called Preferred Lease. Um, they're on the uh, stock exchange in the U.S. Uh, as RCII. Uh, and so I really fell in love with, with just servicing the, you know, giving consumers multiple payment options. Uh, and, and through that journey, uh, I ended up here at QuickFee. And when I started, there was there was three or four of us in a room, and we drew this out. This was only a year ago, uh, and, and now we're, there's there's 75 of us here uh, total. Um, some of our notable clients would be KPMG, EY, BDO, uh, and, and Cole Scott, Kassane, um, and some of these other larger law firms. So um, I, it's funny because. You know, Moshe, you've asked me quite a bit, how did we, how did we pivot into the legal space? It's a good question. Um, and our main focus, we were founded by an accountant, um, multiple accountants. And, uh, you know, we really serviced, you know, 99% of these accounting firms. But however, what, what was happening is I was starting to get phone calls every week from our managing partners at these accounting firms and saying, hey, Rich, uh, you know, we're getting calls from from lawyers that, that we help um, and that we service asking if this is a product they can use for their clients. Uh, and, and after an overwhelming uh, response or test in the legal vertical, uh, we really started attending a couple conferences such as ABA Tech Show um, and some of these firm admin um, conferences. And we really just saw it take off and, and people adopt the product. So uh, we've really just started uh, recently uh, offering this in the, in the legal space. And we're just over the top excited to, to really help this, this vertical. Awesome. Love. I love that background, Richard. And um, I, I want to jump right into the conversation because uh, real quick, I'm just going to set the stage. What, what, 
I understand LawFunder, QuickFee does is besides for allow a law firm to process credit cards as a payment source, um, it also allows you to introduce payment plans. So have, having set that stage, I, 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 before we talk about what you do, I want to move back in the conversation and I want to talk about the relevancy of payment plans. And uh, it, 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 it talks to something that I've been, I've been beating the drum for a while here on the Profit With Law podcast that we really need to entertain moving away from the billable hour and moving more towards a defined fee or a flat fee or a value-based price. Now, obviously contingency is, is a totally different, uh, you know, business model. And, and that's not necessarily what we're talking about, but within the realm of consumer facing legal services, like family law, estate planning, bankruptcy, all of those you have an opportunity to create a, a flat fee that somebody can engage with you for and know what it's going to cost them to resolve their issue. Now, maybe not resolution. Maybe there's, you know, it's stage one towards resolution and some people will resolve after that stage and other people might need to continue going. But for example, in, in bankruptcy, it's pretty much set by the, you know, the, what you can charge for, for a bankruptcy is almost limited by the, 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 the federal laws uh, around bankruptcy. If you're doing a chapter seven, for example, um, in, in family law, uh, one of the biggest pushbacks I get from family law attorneys is, Hey, you know, this is an open ended thing. I mean, we can, we have some marriages that get that end with a divorce that costs $5,000 and some that cost 50 or a hundred thousand dollars so how, how do we how do you create a flat fee for that and in those conversations and through going through going through this over the, the past 18 months and really honing in on on this specific subject matter uh, what I do is, is I guide them on identifying different phases within the business that they're working so for example in family law at the beginning the very first thing that you're going to do is try to figure out if you can equitably and amicably end this divorce which means that you're going to have negotiations around the basics what is what are our arrangements going to be if there's children involved what are our arrangements going to be with the children what are our arrangements going to be with our finances um, those are conversations that have to be had regardless and um, we are that is stage one so uh, for those of you who have headphones in your ears, I apologize for the kids screaming daddy outside my office door that you are now hearing in your hear your earphones. Um, hopefully she will realize that I'm not opening the door for her and she'll go away. Um, so in the family law, you know, for ex that example, there's that first stage, which is that negotiation that happens or that initial separation agreement that happens. And usually by and large, that can be quantified into a certain amount of time or a certain amount of effort that's required to get to that point. And that's what I, I encourage them to start with when it comes to introducing a flat fee price, where now you can meet with somebody and instead of saying, hey, it's going to be open-ended, it could be $50,000, could be $5,000, we're going to need a $2,500 retainer or a $5,000 retainer, and we're going to work off of that. Instead, you could say, look, there are four phases to a divorce. Phase one is to have this conversation but with the other party and to try to get to a point where we at least agree on some point and we disagree on some, but that's, you know, that's phase one. Phase two is potentially a go to mediation to resolve those on those points that we don't agree on. Phase three might be litigation, you know, and phase four might be post-divorce. So now that we've broken into phases, we can say to get started, phase one is going to cost you $5,000. Now we've got this flat fee that a client knows if I engage with you, I'm going to pay $5,000 and we're at least going to get past phase one, or maybe it's seven, or maybe it's $10,000, whatever that price is. And I think that's where our, our conversation begins. So the first thing I wanted to do is I wanted to get your input on the structure of flat fee pricing um, and your thoughts on, on the industry going in that direction. Yeah, look, Moshe, good question. We hear it a lot. Um, you know, flat fee, uh, we believe for, you know, especially smaller practices, if you start with a flat fee arrangement, um, you'll see more success out of the gate. Um, you know, and, and something that's interesting here, and I'm going to get back to this flat fee and kind of how it ties in, but um, look, the 2020 legal trends report by Clio, uh, just a couple statistics for your, your listeners here. 73% of attorneys said that they used 
or are starting to use online payment solutions just this year alone. Uh, and 96% want to continue accepting online payments after pandemic ends. However, only 40% of consumers believe that lawyers actually offer electronic payments at all. The same with flat fee pricing. You know, something a lot of these, these um, the consumers talk about is they don't go to their lawyer because they're unsure or they think it's too expensive. If you have flat fee packages on your website listed, whether it be a state planning or, or just a, you know, a typical divorce, there's always a conversation or, or a consultation that can happen down the road after you've at least gotten that, that consumer in the door. But the hardest part is getting them in the door. So flat fee pricing is, is not just, it doesn't just work. It's also a great strategy to bring these, these consumers into your door. Richard, I love that you brought up the Clio Trends Report. As a matter of fact, I think it was in the podcast episode where I where I went through. So I did an episode where I went through the entire um, uh, Clio Legal Trends Report of 2020, uh, and I identified all the important all the points that I felt were important for my listeners to to hear. And I don't have the Trends Report in front of me. I should have grabbed it for our conversation, knowing it was going to come up. But I do know that. Um, the like the top three indicators that uh, consumers indicated were factors in choosing their attorney were around what they pay. Um, and I, actually, I think number one was was um, referrals uh, and and um, and reviews. And then I think right behind it was affordability. Um, uh, ability to, uh, to 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 pay in payment plans. Um, and I think there was a third one around the pricing of services and I don't have it in front of me, but I think that was when I, you know, I, I mentioned your, your product on the podcast that you had mentioned earlier. Um, and we'll folks, we'll link that up in the show notes. Cause that's a great episode. If you want to go back and look at the, the report is really, it, it's, it's very revealing uh, as to, you know, what, wh where are your peers and where do you need to be in order to be relevant in the industry? Um, so if you know, that the key factors for somebody to make their decision on hiring an attorney is their ability to know that they can afford to pay it, then it's, it, it's our duty to, as attorneys, and I say our, neither of Richard or myself are attorneys, but our meaning my listeners, it's our duty to present ourselves in a way that we're addressing this. Because if not, your sales, your intake, your sales are going to decline. Line. You're going to be adversely affected. Your ability to get those clients is going to be minimized because you're not paying attention to what the market wants. You're not paying attention to what people need in order to be able to make the decision that, yes, I am going to use you. And sometimes it's not a matter of, hey, I got I to do this in order to beat out my competition. It's I got to do this in order for somebody to be able to say yes to using legal services in general. Um, and that, you know, the, this whole conversation around access to justice and whether, uh, you know, whether we are doing a good job of making sure that people do have access to justice. There, one of the other things that the Legal Trends Report shows is that over 70 percent of the population can't even can't even afford to hire an attorney. So if we can have a solution that allows them to now be able to hire an attorney for whatever the, the, the matter might be, then that is helping solve a bigger problem, which is increasing the pie. It's increasing how, you know, how, where you can get your clients. Yeah, look, I think it, it's going to take some time to find the sweet spot, uh, really how, you know, a flat fee engagement would work. It's going to take some trial and error, but over time, you're going to improve your profit margins. Uh, you know, so a couple of things to keep in mind, you know, when you're uh, discuss, maybe discussing or, or thinking about flat fee basis. Uh, one, most importantly, know your target clients. Um, you know, with a value-based pricing, you know, something that could be helpful for you and your firm is maybe go back from some of your former clients or, or review some old cases and just determine where that flat fee could have been helpful. Could that have worked with this client? Right, and just run a few, a few scenarios through your head uh, and say, could this have worked? And, and would I have seen a better profit margin um, from that previous client? Um, secondly, maybe test out uh, a capped fee structure. Right, So you can test out a couple um, capped fee for maybe estate planning or, 
or divorce here, you know, here's a basic divorce. This is what it's going to get you. And this is how much it's going to cost, or here's a basic DUI um, uh, case. And this is how much it's going to cost. And then maybe just, you know, first and initially just restrict it to any uh, productized services. So most flat fee devotees recommend that you only use it on products or prepackaged services. So again, it goes back to the core of just anything that makes sense packaging or, or turning into a flat fee. And then at, at, at that time, you can kind of modify your flat fee model as you need. So again, this is going to take some trial and error, but you will eventually find your sweet spot. And once you find your sweet spot, uh, your margins uh, won't thank you enough. Yeah, and I think that it's important, and this keeps coming up on the on the podcast. So for my longtime listeners, you already know all these arguments, but for people who are just tuning in for the first time, and by the way, if this is your first time tuning into the show, I want to encourage you to hit the subscribe button in your podcast player because that'll notify you when we release a new episode. We do two of those a week. So every Tuesday and Thursday, we have a new episode for you. Uh, usually Tuesdays are me uh, talking solo behind the microphone and Thursdays we have a guest like Richard on the show um, and both have value and um, y- you're definitely not going to want to miss. I mean, some of these conversations are really, really important and really good uh, for you to be hearing when it comes to running your law firm and, and, and doing it with an eye on profitability. Uh, so make sure you hit the subscribe button in your podcast player so that uh, you get notified uh, every time we release a new episode. Now, uh, totally lost my train of thought there because I got, wanted to tell everybody to subscribe. Um, but we, we, we were talking about the, um, you know, the idea of flat fee pricing. And basically, the, the other side of the coin is the expense side of your business. So you can work really hard to bring in new clients and work really hard to bring in new leads. If you can't serve those clients with a decreased uh, decreasing expenses as opposed to increasing expenses, that has an effect on the profitability. And w- one of the beautiful things that I like, probably th- one of the most beneficial things that I could think of going to a flat fee model, other than peace of mind for the client, is that you are no longer in conflict with your client when it comes to the work you're doing for them. When you're billing hourly, there is an inherent conflict with what you're doing with between your what you what what you want as a lawyer and what your client wants as a client as a lawyer you want to bill out as much time as possible as a client you want to pay for as little time as possible so lawyers are so careful about doing conflict checks at the beginning of an engagement yet the inherent business model that we operate in billing by the hour is in itself the biggest conflict of all and that's where i think that once you get, you start to figure out how to p- package your services in a way that you're not billing by the hour, that opens up an entire new world of possibility as to who does the work. Because you're no longer trying to do the work yourself so that you could bill as much of your time as possible. You're now trying to figure out how do I do as little of the work as possible as the uh, owner of the firm and pass as much of the work as possible to other people. Now, people will argue and say, hey, that they're hiring me as an attorney. Yeah, but nobody expects the attorney to be doing all the research, to be doing the gathering of the information, to be, you know, they, they expect your staff, your paralegals, your assistants are going to get that stuff done. Up until now, you might have kept that stuff to yourself because it increases how much you can bill. But now you can pass that to a, a lower level staff member uh, and nobody needs to know which staff member is working on it or, or what's their allocation of time. Uh, and what that does is, is it opens up a whole new world of possibility of how little can you spend to work a client through to the completion of their legal matter. And that really opens up the profitability spectrum for you as an owner, because you can significantly decrease your costs while increasing the revenue that you're bringing in per client and getting more clients because you're giving them this, this peace of mind, finite dollar amount that they know they're going to spend to get this matter resolved. So in my opinion, flat fee or, or set fee, you know, packaged fee um, is the best way to operate your law firm uh, contingency aside. Um, now, in certain scenarios like, uh, you know, 
um, litigation where it's open ended. Yes, there's limitations to this, and you and you're going to have to mix and match where it makes sense to do this a package fee versus charging by the hour or by the amount of work that's involved. But I think that there's a lot of pieces of things that you do that can still be packaged, and especially if you look at the front end, you know what every initial client usually goes through the same thing, um, and 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 it's in that conversation that we want to figure out how to get past the hurdle uh, for the client to get them through the door. How do we make it easiest for them to say yes to working with you? Not necessarily just with you, with an attorney in general. And because you're the one offering that, th that opportunity that's going to remove that barrier, it's going to end up being with you that they say yes. Um, so Richard, what, setting the stage here, we, you know, we, we've, we know that packaging our pricing is, is a key to profitability, to getting new clients. What's the next barrier? The next barrier, as far as, as far as I can tell, is affordability, right? What if that package is five grand or 10 grand? So what, what do you think about that? Yeah, so it's, it's so funny you say that, Moshe. I was just reading something on law.com. I believe it was last week. And they did a survey with, with uh, a couple thousand attorneys and, and they asked them, what was the, what do they think uh, was the key to retaining clients and winning new businesses and attorneys answered communication. They did the same exact survey to consumers that have used a law firm within the past year. And their answer was, was nowhere near communication. It was actually autonomy. They wanted a sense of autonomy. Right. And, and what is that? What does that mean? Or, or what's an example of that? Um, that could be, again, make your clients feel like they have control over their financial situation. Flat fee pricing makes them feel like they have control. Right. Multiple payment options make them feel like they have control. Um, offering or, or excuse me, um, allowing your clients to have um, or identify the easy ways they can pay, such as ensuring that you know, the multiple payment options are on every invoice you send out in the mail or via email. Or uh, you have in your uh, office, you have QR codes that just allows them to scan uh, and, and follow up and see, hey, look, I have three or four payment options if I wanna use this attorney. So I just think it's kind of funny, Moshe, that you know, almost all, it was in the 90 percentile, uh, and I'll find the article and send it to you so you can link it to this, podcast. But again, they said the key to, to, um, to winning or retaining new business was communication. However, your, your clients think, think the opposite. Um, communication was not in that whatsoever. It was purely autonomy. They want to feel like they're, they're in a bit of control when they're picking or retaining their, their attorney. Um, so to answer your, your next, your, your question, your original question, Moshe, which was what's the next barrier? Uh, I, I think, we, we answered that in a bit um, there, but I think the biggest barrier, again, is just letting clients know there's options. That's the biggest thing we find, and that's the biggest thing you attorneys will find um, on whether it be law.com or some of these other outlets, or maybe even this podcast here, which is the majority of, of consumers don't reach out to an attorney because they think it's too expensive, they can't afford it. Right, or they don't know their options exist. So I think that's the biggest barrier we all have to face is ensuring that you know when you have your your marketing strategies, ensuring that your your pricing is is out there, or and, and just be as transparent as possible. I hope that kind of answered your question, Moshe. Let me share an exciting tool that I recently came across that is a game changer for law firms that bill hourly or by the project, otherwise known as flat fee billing. The 2020 Legal Trends Report published by Clio rates how important various items are in a client choosing your firm. You may be surprised to know that the third most important decision factor for someone choosing a lawyer is the ability to pay with a payment plan. The challenge that law firm owners face is the risk of a client not making good on that payment plan. Most attorneys don't offer payment plans because of that. The problem is now, is now solved with LawFunder. LawFunder allows you to easily add a payment option to all your client invoices and retainer replenishment requests that does not require credit checks, applications, or any other complex process. 
The client's able to use their existing credit cards, allowing them to earn points and miles, access credit card specials on interest rates, and any other tools they use to manage their cash. When I saw this tool, I was blown away. Most importantly, it removes all the risk from the law firm and makes an easy and painless process to the payment process. So if you want to check off the box on one of the top factors in new client decisions, if you want to decrease your accounts receivable and get paid immediately, LawFunder is the solution. Go to lawfunder.com. That's lawfundar.com forward slash profit with law to learn more. This podcast episode is sponsored by Legalese Marketing. No buzzwords, no jargon, no BS, just results to make your law firm grow. That's Legalese Marketing. Legalese Marketing is a full-service marketing agency for lawyers by legal experts and digital advertising specialists. Their goal? To help your firm stand out in a competitive marketplace with personalized solutions to help your law firm attract the clients you want, backed by the systems to make it all work correctly. Visit ProfitWithLaw.com forward slash Legalese to learn more. This podcast episode is sponsored by Noda, powered by m and Bank. You went to law school to be a lawyer, not an accountant. Take advantage of Noda, a no-cost IOLTA management tool that helps solo and small law firms track client funds down to the penny. Enjoy peace of mind with one-click reconciliation, automated transaction alerts, and real-time bank data. Visit TrustNoda.com to learn more. Terms and conditions may apply. Yeah, absolutely. And and I I, I think that, you know, it, putting you just mentioned something, putting your pricing on the website. And I uh, that's something that a lot of people, you know, uh, have pushback on and, are, and have a really hard time wrapping their heads around because, you know, uh, well, what, you know, what if the situation is different? What if, you know, everybody who walks through the door has, you know, has another uh, unique scenario? Um, what kind of corner am I boxing myself into? What if I'm putting a price on the website and the price is too high? There's a lot of what ifs that people ask themselves, you know, or, or question when, when pr- being presented with an idea like this. And I would turn around and challenge you if this is the position that you're taking, if this is what you're questioning, I would turn around and challenge you to say a couple of things. Number one, uh, go into you know Google's keyword research and look at what people are searching for. Are people searching for questions like, how much does it cost to do a trust? How much does it cost to get divorced? Yep. How much, you know, like if you start looking at those questions, you will suddenly be, you'll be surprised to find that those are some of the top searched questions around any specific legal matter. And um, people are always concerned about what does it cost to, to get this done. And if you put a, make a blog post and, and write up, you know, the various scenarios of, of why it might cost different depending on your situation. Or if you even publish a price sheet, but you explain that this is, you know, this might be step one in your, in your situation, or this might be for specific people, you might not fall under this category, but this is a pretty good idea of what it might cost to do, you know, to do business with us. Uh, and you put it out there, or if you have a productized item, you know, like let's say it, it, it's uh, creating a, a business entity, which is a bad example because LegalZoom's got that market covered. But let's say that you you're putting that on your website, then you can just say, hey, it's six hundred dollars to create an entity or whatever the price point is, and you can have a checkout button, and somebody could literally purchase that service on your website. I recently had a conversation with um, Tucker Cottingham uh, from Loya. Um, I think I got it. I hope I got his last, his last name right. Um, and he, you know, at Loya, they, they created a self-service document platform where essentially you can ask the, the person who's inputting information and in, you can ask them specific questions. Based on those questions, you could spit out a document. So essentially, they've created this ability to have a document created on the fly that they can charge for, for somebody who needs it. And... Um, you know, this is uh, I my friend Bobby Clink, who was on the on the podcast earlier in the year, has a business where he sells legal templates to uh, online entrepreneurs. And, you know, this this would take his legal templates to the next level. He sells the templates where you have to go. You watch a video where he instructs you on how to make changes and you have to go and make changes. He can turn around and take his templates 
turn it into a, a questionnaire where they ask you, you know, please input your legal entity name and please input your, your address. Now you need to decide whether you want to do X, Y, or Z, which one is it going to be? And then you select those things and then it turns around and spits out a completed document for you. And now you pay for that document. Uh, for example, like privacy policy on my website or uh, uh, terms and uh, of, of uh, terms and conditions of using my website, things like that. that every website kind of needs to have in place, especially if you're going to run paid advertising and you're going to be collecting people's information and you could turn around and, and, and productize that and, and put a price tag around it. So I think this idea of, uh, you know, commoditizing legal practice, you know, for these kinds of things, I think that that's definitely something that's going to happen, whether we want it to or not. And, you know, somebody recently told me, and I use this line now all the time. So I, I, and I have to find who it was that told it to me so I can give them credit, but 2025 came five years early in the legal industry. Yeah. And, and it's so true because we wouldn't be having these conversations if not for COVID. And although I already was talking about it in 2019, but not to the level that we're talking about it today and not to the acceptance level that people are willing to hear it today. Uh, and I think that that's, you know, you really, we really even need to think beyond this because yes, productizing our legal services in a way is something that we're going to need to do, but we also need to look beyond that because the next step beyond that is that it's going to happen automatically or it's going to happen very inexpensively with somebody who can do it for less than we can. And therefore we need to look and say, okay, how am I going to separate myself? How am I going to make myself relevant beyond the productized legal services, because that's going to be taken over by the legal zoom, by the, you know, by the, the lawyer, by the companies that, that can just do that automatically and create a website around it. Uh, assuming that, that the, 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 the bars and the legal associations and, you know, will allow that to happen at, you know, at some point the consumers are going to win and they're going to be able to get all that stuff inexpensively. So now we got to look and say, okay, how, how do we stay relevant? How do I, how do I stay valuable to my clients as an attorney, um, which then goes into the realm of, you know, okay, what, what can they, what can we not automate? Yeah, look, I think most importantly, um, if you're an attorney and you have a practice right now, the first thing you can do um, right away to make an immediate impact or immediate change that will uh, ensure that you stay at the forefront, uh, you know, of, of what the consumers are asking for is one, just create a dedicated payments or, or pricing page on your firm's website. Most importantly, it doesn't have to be pricing. Um, start with a dedicated payment section that, that offers and allows your clients just to pay their invoice online. That, that's a great place to start. And then just step two of that would just be to in, include different payment methods in all of your, your call to action inside of your, your marketing strategies. So a couple examples of those could be Maybe we accept online payments via credit card, ACH, and payment plan, or now accepting multiple forms of payments, or we take electric or excuse me, electronic payments, right? And then step three of that would be just ensure, you know, kind of what I spoke about, Moshe, which is just ensure that it's on the basics, right? Every single invoice you send out should should tell your clients their payment options. Every email you send out should have a make a payment button web pages, banners, simple table tents or flyers. Uh, these are what your clients are asking for. And this is the basic stuff that you could change overnight to ensure that you stay, um, you know, a top of the industry and, and you're not getting left behind, you know, by people such as like you, you, you mentioned them, LegalZoom. Uh, and something that, you know, I think is interesting, Moshe, that uh, a lot of people don't know, but, uh, I mean, you take a, take a step back and, and look at how many firms are still accepting paper checks, right? I know the U S you know, we're pretty behind within, with our banking system, et cetera, but uh, paper checks are, are decreasing by 1.6 billion a year. This means the federal reserve has said that by 2026 paper checks will be obsolete. So by 2026 in just six years, um, and this was before the pandemic hit this statistic, you, you can no longer accept a paper check, right? So, you know, you mentioned things be, you know, becoming accelerated because of this pandemic. Um, it's important to just kind of take a step back and go, okay, we can talk about payments all day long and how easy it is, but, but 
do my clients know that, you know, they have multiple options to pay or do my clients know that there's, you know, when they Google, uh, you know, estate, how much is estate planning that I pop up first, things like that are, are, are pretty simple. Um, and that's what, you know, I've enjoyed about listening to your, some of your podcasts is you, you bring on a lot of frequent, frequent guests that just talk about some of the, these basics to become successful. Let me share an exciting tool that I recently came across that is a game changer for law firms that bill hourly or by the project, otherwise known as flat fee billing. The 2020 Legal Trends Report published by Clio rates how important various items are in a client choosing your firm. You may be surprised to know that the third most important decision factor for someone choosing a lawyer is the ability to pay with a payment plan. The challenge that law firm owners face is the risk of a client not making good on that payment plan. Most attorneys don't offer payment plans because of that. The problem is now now solved with LawFunder. LawFunder allows you to easily add a payment option to all your client invoices and retainer replenishment requests. That does not require credit checks, applications, or any other complex process. The client's able to use their existing credit cards, allowing them to earn points and miles, access credit card specials on interest rates, and any other tools they use to manage their cash. When I saw this tool... I was blown away. Most importantly, it removes all the risk from the law firm and makes an easy and painless process to the payment process. So if you want to check off the box on one of the top factors in new client decisions, if you want to decrease your accounts receivable and get paid immediately, LawFunder is the solution. Go to lawfunder.com. That's lawfundar.com forward slash profit with law to learn more. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I, I love that you, that you point this out. Like it, it, it's so easy to make somebody else's life easier, right? It's, it, it, and our job is it, as a vendor that somebody you might choose is not just to provide the service that we're providing, but it's to solve a problem. And if you put yourself in the shoes of the client, their problem is not just the legal issue. Their problem goes beyond that. It's, how am I going to pay for it? How, you know, what, what's it going to be like to work with this person, with this company, with this, you know, with this entity? Um, what's that experience going to be like? So the more that you can do to communicate that upfront, the more you're going to put somebody at ease and make them comfortable in that relationship. We had a, a guest here on the podcast um, and it's um, Jim... Uh, I'm forgetting his last name right now. This is awful when I do this live. Um, Jim Armstrong from um, fam, uh, fam- Family of the Accused, the photo project. Uh, so basically, he, uh, I interviewed him and he went through what the process was like. So his, 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 uh, his wife, um, uh, her son, so his stepson, uh, was accused of a crime, uh, and it was a very serious crime, and and it was in a different state, and they they had to, you know, all of a sudden at the drop of a hat, find a criminal attorney to represent his stepson, and he went through what it was like for them to seek an attorney, what they were looking for. Um, and, and what it felt like when they walked through the door of these various offices to meet with somebody to, you know, to, to figure out who are they going to choose to represent their child. And, um, in, in that podcast, which we'll link up in the show notes, you can go back and listen to it because it's a must listen to for any law firm owner, um, whether you're criminal law or not, the, the whole point of that podcast is to understand what shoes your client is walking in when you're in the process of selling. Because if you can understand their state of mind, if you can understand their challenges, if you can understand what they need in the entire package of the solution, that will, that will change the way that you present yourself. And things like, do I offer somebody a cup of water or not? And how do I offer that cup of water? Do I have a smile on my face? Do I, am I acting compassionate or am I acting, you know, uh, strict or am I, you know, like all those things all relay into what they're going through and what their experience is going to be perceived with their interaction with you. And 
when we look at the payment side of it, because that's obviously that's your forte and that's where we, we're going to focus right now. When we look at the payment side of it, we have to walk in their shoes and think about the consumer. You know, is my target market somebody with million dollars, m- millions net worth and they're buying a small, you know, multi- a couple thousand dollar legal service from me? And if that's the case, then uh, they don't need a payment plan. They probably don't even need the ability to pay by credit card, but it's just going to make it life easier for everybody. So we're going to make that available to them. But by and large, 90% of the law firms that we're talking to that are listening to this, you probably have clients who can barely afford your services, probably have clients who are going into debt in order to pay for you. You probably have clients who are mortgaging their house or doing something else in order to pay for these legal services that they suddenly find themselves needing to pay for and never thought that they would have to pay for it, never planned for that opportunity. And when you're dealing with somebody in that situation, one of the biggest stressors that they can possibly have, the thing that will keep them up at night is not whether or not the outcome of the legal matter is going to be in their favor. It's how can I pay for this? And when we put ourselves in that situation and we couch it that way, we understand that that's the shoes they're walking in. If we can do something that will make them sleep at night, we've already won the battle. And that's where I think the power of payment plans comes in. So I want to, I want to go down that road. I want to talk about payment plans because I know that that's something that you offer and it's a beautiful thing because you, you create this one gateway for payment where you can pay by credit card, you can pay by check, you can pay what these are your different options. And one of the options is a payment plan. So let's talk about that because historically payment plans, the risk was on the attorney, the law firm owner. And therefore most law firms don't offer it because what if I provide the services and we complete the services and the payment plan's not done. So we're back in this situation where I'm, it, my interests are in conflict with the client's interests. The client wants a speedy outcome and I can't have the outcome take any shorter than the amount of time that it takes for them to pay off their bill. Um, so the other thing is, is it, we're, it's not guaranteed they're going to pay it. So we might be providing legal services that ultimately are going to be written off because we never collected that money, uh, which is why we have a retainer. But we're trying to get away from that to give them this flat fee with a payment plan so it can make it really easy for them to recognize, hey, I, I can pay for this. It's going to cost me $5,000. But if I break it off, break it down, you know, over the course of three or four months, suddenly it you know, 1500 or 1250 a month. And now it's, it's something that I can more likely be able to see how I'm going to make that work. Um, so Richard, how do, how do the payment plans that you offer work and how do they solve this underlying problem of, Hey, I don't want to have this risk that somebody's not going to pay. Yep. So what I'd like to do first motion is I just want to jog backwards for a second um, and then I'll kind of jump back on that yellow brick road to the payment plans. But yeah, sure. Uh, look, I'm super fortunate that you know every day I get to speak to uh, law firms, you know, that are clients of ours, all the way from from Amlaw 100 firms, all the way down to you know your your solo pract- uh, practitioner. Uh, and something that we do, and we do often, is we survey these these firms. We ask them what's working, what's not working. Um, and we get a lot of really, really good data from that. Um, so a challenge to the listeners here would be, uh, you're very fortunate to speak with customers and, uh, consumers every single day, right. That are either utilizing your services or they're, or they're interested in utilizing your services. So, you know, if you can do something as simple as collect an email address, you can send out a very simple survey, uh, to every single one of these prospects, or clients and ask them what they like, what they don't like, how their experience was, um, et cetera. And, and that will kind of help you shape your practice quicker um, and see quicker success. So you'll find out things like, you know, you just, d- you didn't offer enough payment options for me, or uh, you were too expensive, or I went down the road to, to this firm because of this reason, right? So the power of surveys, I'd like to just emphasize that, you know, the things we're learning from our surveys, just from all of our successful and, and unfortunately some that aren't seeing as much success, um, these law firms is just absolutely powerful. So one of the things 
that you know we've gathered from these surveys and, and we've partnered with, with some folks at say law.com or Clio, we know that 72% of every consumer that walks into a law firm would rather pay via a payment plan. And as you all know, sitting on this call, that the average time it takes for a lawyer to get paid in the industry is 83 days. So if you'd like to A, accelerate um, that 83 days and become paid quicker, and B, um, reduce that barrier of entry for, for prospects to, to take on uh, new work with you, uh, the most important thing to do is, is to offer payment plans. So it's been really our forte here at uh, Quick Fee and Law Funder. Um, and again, we've seen just tremendous success with it. And, and that's why we're getting calls every day from these firms. So I'll just kind of walk you through Moshe, if you don't mind yeah. how this works. Um, and, and I'll just let you, you can interrupt me at any moment uh, and, and we can go from there. But so sounds good. Law Funder or Quick Fee installments, we, it allows your clients to pay their fees in four interest-free monthly installments. It's at no risk and no recourse. Why is the no risk and no recourse um, so important? We found with especially the larger law firms, the way they, uh, the way they, they bonus, which could be uh, at the end of the year, uh, with it, whether it be partner drawings, et cetera, anything with a possible recourse tied to it doesn't really fit within the legal um, parameters, right? There's issues with possible trust, uh, trust accounting, et cetera. We finally just delivered for the first time ever our brand new product, which we are dubbing Advice Now, Pay Later. Um, so what this does, it allows your clients to cleverly leverage the existing availability on their credit card to pay in four monthly installments. Okay, what, what does this mean and how does that work? So for example, we'll just use a $400 invoice uh, just for conversation sake here. So client walks in, says, hey, how much for uh, estate planning? You say, it's gonna cost you $400, perfect. As long as they have $400 on, their, on one of their credit cards or multiple credit cards, they can split it up in four interest-free installments. So they type in their credit card, it immediately puts a hold on their credit card for 400 while debiting their account for their first monthly payment of $100, okay? After that, within just one second, it re reauthorizes their account for only 300. And then sub subsequently after that, every month thereon, it just debits their account $100 until they're paid in full. The best part about this is that your firm is paid in full the very next day. Okay, uh, so what are, again, what are some benefits for you to utilize this? Um, A, you get paid faster. So we are seeing an average reduction in AR by about 32%. Uh, B, it's a tool to win new business. And C, it's a tool to upsell uh, multiple or different or other, excuse me, other services that maybe that prospect really wanted, but thought they couldn't afford it. Right. So again, yeah, the a, perfect example for that would be you're talking about, you know, a will, uh, maybe they really need a trust, which is multiple thousands of dollars versus a couple of hundred or a few hundred dollars. And they, they would have just got a basic will because they weren't ready to spend a few thousand dollars, but now they can spread that out over a few, over four months. And suddenly it becomes something that's, that's more reasonable for them. Absolutely correct. So again, most importantly, you know, most folks don't want to tap out their, their cash reserves, right? So, they, you know, as we all know, there's no time like now where people need to preserve their cash. This allows them the ability to utilize um, their credit card, not pay interest utilizing their credit card, still gather all of the points, reward miles, cash back, et cetera, on their credit card, but only pay that entire balance one quarter at a time. Uh, and so a lot of people ask, well, what does it cost me? This is too good to be true, right? So uh, Richard, uh -huh. before, before we get into that, into the cost, I, you asked me to interrupt you. So I'm going to do yes, that. Yes, please. Um, <laughs> Uh, can somebody use this to 
pay any of their outstanding invoices with the with the law firm. So you know, it, uh, somebody you know, maybe we're not in a flat fee scenario. Maybe they're 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 billing hourly, but they, you know, the client's now getting uh, you know th- these these hourly bills, or maybe they're on they're on a retainer, right? So you're you you send out a retainer replenishment request that somebody now needs to send you five thousand dollars because the retainer's tapped out, and you're going to have to stop work on their account, but they want to turn that into a payment plan. Can they, can they turn around and use this payment plan option to pay that retainer and you in turn put that retainer money into their trust account when you get it the next day? Absolutely. It'd be the same as if you call them and said, I need you to re- replenish your retainer. And they say, no problem. Here's my credit card number. It's, a, it's as simple as that. Uh, and, and that's what a lot of folks are using this for is, you get the benefit of, of asking them essentially to replenish the retainer by using their credit card. You, you get paid the very next day, but they get that luxury of only seeing one quarter of that um, replenishment that they paid come out of their credit card that day. That's awesome. All right. You, carry on. What does this cost? <laughs> yeah, good question. So uh, the cost to the firm is 4.99%. Uh, and that is not billed at the time of uh, the transaction. It's billed uh, only and if a client u- utilizes it at the end of the month. So if it's, again, if it's $100, we only bill you that $25 at the end of the month. Um, you're, how'd you get to 20, how, how, the $5? Sorry. I was going <laughs> to say, how'd you get to $25? Yeah. It sounds like more Sorry than 5% to me. Um, so, what do you mean by use it at the end of the month? Meaning they, they can pay the bill in full before the, the month is over and you avoid that fee? No. So we don't direct debit the firm for the 4.99 or 5% until the end of each month for all um, payment plans that went through for that month. Got it. So okay. that, that, that amount is paid in full to them the very next day, the full 100% invoice value. Okay, so they are going to have that five percent fee on the 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 money collected, um, but they're going to. And I'm rounding your four point nine nine up yep. to five. I'm taking the liberty to do that, even though I'm 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 raining on your keeping it under five <laughs> number. Okay. Um, but so they're they're going to have the five percent fee regardless. It's just that the timing of that is just going to happen at the end of the month. So it'll be one large, pay, you know, charge that comes out that covers all the various payment plans that were run through that entire month. Yep. Correct. Okay. Now, I don't know if you're prepared to answer this question, but what are the um, lawyers seeing as far as legality? um, If this is used for retainer replenishment, Um, the client thinks that they've paid $5,000 for this retainer replenishment, you're netting 95% of that. Is the firm now obligated to take that five, that extra 5% and put it in the client's trust account uh, to go towards their, their bills? Look, most, most of them are um, be, because as we all know, uh, trust accounting is something that, uh, that nobody should take lightly. Um, and that's, what's so cool about this product is uh, you don't necessarily need to um, the way it's set up. Um, and, you know, that's something that we, you know, some of that paperwork and, uh, just professional legal advice that we've received um, that we can send out to you and, and attach here for your viewers to take a look at. But um, a lot of them are, we're hearing, are still setting that 5% aside. Um, however, they don't need to. Yeah, I, I would think that they, that they have to, because if you think about it, it, it if the client pays a $1,000 invoice, the full $1,000 Always is going towards the invoice. the The firm is eating the fee on the other side. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, with retainer money, you might end up returning that money to a client. So it's a risk that you're taking. Yep. But I think it's still a risk worth taking because the other risk that you're taking is doing work for the client that doesn't have money to pay for it, and being stuck with that outstanding invoice that never gets paid is a far greater risk than being stuck with needing to re- refund the money that you already paid 5% on. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I think it's the, it's the better of, of two evils if you think of it that way. Yeah, that's right. It'd be the same thing, uh, Moshe, as if, if they didn't want to ever accept credit cards. 
uh, it's, it'd be the same risk as, as accepting a credit card. Right. Now, uh, one of the, the I, I, I was recently mentioning this payment plan idea to, to an, another uh, um, uh, colleague of mine. And one of the questions that came up is, how does this work from the customer service perspective? Um, it, does the client, it, with this money tying up the, the client's credit line and then being locked into this payment plan, which takes the risk off of the attorney um, and, and essentially makes it that the, the user can't dispute the charge, they can't get out of the charge, which you didn't cover that, but I think that's pretty much the, the way that it works. Um, does that, is that something that, that, jeopardizes the the customer satisfaction score um in any way do, pe- do people get upset about that is that is that something you just need to clearly communicate what has your experience been with that yeah no that's a good question i think you know m- most importantly just to to reiterate to your your listeners here is that you know we've partnered with uh, a company called split it um to utilize their technology with 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 our existing technology to offer this product and and along with that comes their uh, very large customer service um, teams across San Francisco, New York, um, Israel, Australia, um, and some of these other places for any questions that customers may have, whether it be um, refunds um, or anything like that, they, you know, they can reach out uh, before they even reach out to the firm. They can just be directed straight to their, their customer service team in anything or refunds or you know, changes of credit cards, et cetera, can be done right through them. Awesome. All right. I think that's all the questions I have for you. I think that we can, you know, we obviously could talk about this more, but uh, we're, we're, we're coming up on, on the end of our time together anyway. Uh, so I, you know, I, I think that ultimately the question that people are going to have is this sounds too good to be true. Um, you know, how, where can I, where can I see it in action? Where can I see somebody who's using this? Um, and how do I get started? So I think you have answers to both of those. So let me just tee that question up for you and let you take it from there. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, look, if anybody's interested in, and like to learn more, you can go to lawfunder.com. Uh, so law F U N D A R.com. Um, click on the law firm solutions and click on installments and all of the information that you would need is there. You can register there for free. It takes less than 60 seconds to register for free uh, for your firm. Or you can, if you want it even easier and you'd like me to send you a direct link, you can just email me at richard at quickfee.com. Awesome. Um, and I think that uh, uh, Richard actually gave me a URL to um, a website. And it turns out that it's somebody who is a, a guest on this show, uh, Devin Miller, who's been on this show twice. And uh, we'll link up his, uh, his two guest interviews on the podcast uh, uh, in the show notes. Uh, he's using your payment plan services for his IP firm. Um, and we'll link up in the show notes to his website where he's got the payment plan client facing where the client can select it right there on their website. If you want to see an example of that being used. Um, uh, so it's MillerIPL.com for Miller IP law. And then there's some stuff behind know after it. So I'm not going to give you the whole URL here on audio. It'll be in the show notes, uh, which is in the description in the podcast player that you're listening to. Uh, or you can go to profitwithlaw.com, check the show notes page out there um, and link through to see it in action. Uh, so this has been this has been very informative and and I'm I'm really excited about the the product and the potential. Um, my last question for you, Richard, is when are you going to add more payment options. It's for, it's, it's for monthly payments. Um, but what if somebody wants more or less or anything like that? Yeah, good question. So with our traditional product, um, we do offer credit cards and ACH, um, and a different, uh, type of payment plan that, uh, that isn't offered right now to some, some law firms. Um, however, uh, stay tuned. We're offering a, a brand new client facing portal, um, that is coming out um, very shortly that will offer multiple payment options. So um, you'll be the first to hear about it. Awesome. Can't wait to hear when that comes out. I'm sure that we're going to share it with our listeners. Uh, Richard, it's been an absolute pleasure having you here. I appreciate your time. Um, and this is a, a, a conversation that I think we need to continue having uh, as people um, 
understand the business model that they're operating in and understand that there's that there's more to it than just getting clients. Um, and you know, we need to figure out how to keep the money flowing. We need to figure out how to not get ourselves into situations where we have, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars of accounts receivable, which, you know, when I, when I talk to clients, often that's the case because there isn't a good system in place to make sure that you're getting paid when you're asking for retainer replenishments. Um, I think this is, you know, this product is genius. Um, and I think it's going to solve a lot of problems for a lot of our listeners. So, uh, hopefully, uh, if we mentioned you once, you got a bunch of, you know, a handful of phone calls, hopefully now you'll get a couple of hundred phone calls from this conversation. But, uh, more importantly than that, I, I, you know, I think it's worth everybody checking it out. It might not be the solution that you're comfortable with. It might not be right for you. Um, but there's a lot of you out there that this is going to make a lot of sense to. Yeah, Moshe, it, you know, if you don't mind, if, if I can just ask them if, if they'd like sure. to, to add me on LinkedIn, it's just Richard Formo, uh, you know, and feel free, something that, uh, you know, I like to, to offer people is if you have one question um, where, you know, I'll give you an example, a lot of uh, folks from firms reach out and say, hey, what is, what are you seeing firms doing for this scenario? It might not be around payments, it could be around something else, um, you know, about growing your business. Uh, feel free to just shoot me a note and you either like it or you don't, but it's something that, you know, I like to kind of give some feedback on, on some of, uh, you know, the advice, some of these managing partners of some of these larger firms, medium sized firms, and even successful small firms, um, you know, that they're telling me. Awesome. Uh, so go ahead, folks, connect with Richard on LinkedIn. Uh, also go to law funder, Dot com and check out the product. Uh, go to Miller, uh, Devin Miller's website. Uh, check out how they're using the payment plans. Uh, all of that will be linked in the show notes, including Richard Formo's LinkedIn profile. We'll link that for you as well. Uh, and if you, you know, if this is your first time tuning in to us and you've already hit the subscribe button because we did tell you about that earlier, um, but if you got value out of this episode, um, and if you're a longtime subscriber and you got value out of this episode take a moment and think about a colleague. Think about somebody else who is a, also a law firm owner who can benefit from this service and share this episode with them. Uh, have them tune in and listen to this conversation. And, the, you know, it'll, it'll help them, but it'll also help me as well uh, be able to continue to produce this content for you. Uh, we, you know, we only are uh, as impactful as the reach that we have. And if each of my listeners shared this episode with somebody else, we double our reach. Uh, and that's, that means that we increase the impact that I, that, you know, that I'm having and my guests are having as we come and bring these great episodes to you. So, um, you're already getting value from it. Share the wealth. Don't be stingy, share it with somebody else. And, um, you know, and let's just, you know, let's, let's make everybody profitable. Uh, we don't, we, you shouldn't be the only one. Um, so Richard, thank you so much. Appreciate thanks. you coming. Thanks everybody. All right, folks, take care. We'll catch you on the next episode. That's it for this week's episode of profit with law. If you have enjoyed the show, please consider sharing it with at least one person. Imagine how many lives we can change if we each shared this episode. Another way to share the episode is on social media. We appreciate your support and look forward to you joining us again next week.